Hallelujah. Welcome back, my people. Welcome, welcome back. That was His Love by Anwar Dejere. If this is your first time joining me, hula, 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 la. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And this is your first time joining me. Don't worry. I am. So this morning, I am going to have my guests. Um, hi, Abiola. Um, it's telling me that I can't add you up. I don't know why. But please, can you send me a request? Um, so the week before, we talked about trapped in an abusive relationship. And when we did that series, I got a lot. We had over a thousand people come on the tune. Hi, a big happy birthday to my friend, my sister, Balogun Rachel. Yes, Balogun Rachel was a very good and great part of my life in um, Yola when we were in law school. We used to sing together. Um, we used to pray together. It was amazing. Happy birthday to you, Balogun Rachel. We pray the Lord will bless you, the Lord will keep you, and the Lord will cause his face to shine upon you in the name of Jesus. It's been an amazing time today so as i was saying we were talking about trapped and abusive relationship and one of the things we said the first thing to do is speak out speak out seek help first it is very important that you seek help from people that can also help you don't just seek help from people that will not help you so seek help people that will help you number two if the relationship is getting really toxic please run leave that place at that moment we're not saying you divorce if you're married we are saying that you should separate yourself from that toxic relationship it is very important out of that kind of toxic relationship. It is very important. And today I have my guest already in the building. In the building, yes, people. So let me tell you. So last month when we're doing the series for celebrating beautiful women doing amazing things, we had our last guest on uh, May 30th. I was Damia Dini. And um during the show, Abiola came on the show and she's like, ah, who are these ladies doing stuff, talking about real life stuff that is affecting everybody? And she reached out and I'm like, okay, no problem. So I read a story and I'm like, no, this lady has to be on the show. <laughs> I'm like, this lady has to be. And we are super grateful that um, she was chance and she had time. And we are super happy that she's on the show today. Welcome, 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 my amazing guest. She's a confidence coach at Steady Steps and... Um, She's based in Canada. Don't worry. We Canadian ladies, we Canadian sisters, we are strong women. We do great things. People don't know. Welcome, Abiola. How are you doing? Oh, my gosh. I'm good. I'm good. How are you? <laughs> Tell me you're not shy. I don't know. You're it's funny because I'm like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, you know, I have to start to get used to these things. It's like, it's, it's, it's interesting just hearing other people talk about you. You're like, is that me? Really? Like, me? No. Like, seriously? Okay. No. Everybody, we're talking about Bi Abiola's <laughs> twin sister, like the twin sister that we never met. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Um, let me start from this. If you're, if you're the, um, I don't know if you followed any of the series we did this month. Um, what will be your before I even start with you sharing your story? Yeah, I would say what will be your first take about people that feel that I I read a story about this lady that went online and said that um. Let me let me use the exact words. Uh -huh. Being trapped, you're not trapped in an abusive relationship. If your boyfriend is beating you, your husband is beating you, he truly loves you. It takes a man that loves you that will be able to want to go to prison for you if the authorities catch him. Uh -huh. And I'm like, this this sister needs a psych check. <laughs> you yeah. first need like you need a psych check for one minute before we even continue because I'm, I'm like and there's so many people that are like that that feel that um he loves me like especially if they're even used to that kind of relationship so what's your what's the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear people that talk like that hmm. um if like the one thing that I always talk about, right? The only, one thing that I always talk about is your mentality, your mind, mm. your ideology. Mm. If that's mm. what you saw growing up, that's your normal. That's what you mm. think it's okay for somebody to bait you. And it doesn't necessarily start with this guy baiting you. You have to always look. That's why when I talk to people or when I, you know, when I prospect people or when I talk to clients with my clients, I always have to. I always have to ask them, can you tell me a time when, you know, when X, Y, Z happened in the past? Because you always want to trace it back to how that person grew up, what did that person see? 
So you can imagine somebody mm. who's grown up in a household where it's normal to be beating. Even like between a mother mm. and a child, it's normal to be beating your child. Whenever your child does anything, you correct the child by beating the child. Obviously, that child is going mm. to grow up thinking it's okay to beat the child. It's okay to be beaten. And to them, that's just mm. what their normal is. So now they're coming mm. on and you're doing all of these things and just thinking that like, oh, it's normal for me to beat somebody. It's normal for me to do this. It's normal mm. for me to do that. So you always have to look yeah. back. So it doesn't necessarily start in that household with that person that you're dating or that person that you're in a relationship with. You always have to look back mm. and you always have to think about or you always have to refer back to how that person grew up and the kind of mentality and the ideology that person came with. So obviously mm. that's her normal, right? But it's mm. also that feeling where for me, I just knew that I'm, I'm already diving into my story. But again, for some people, you just know that things like that are not normal. For some people, they're like, okay, no, this yeah. is not normal. Like, why, why would you be beating me to the point where I'm about to die? Like, why would you be beating me to the mm. point where I have bruises on my body and I'm, you know, I'm scared. So when, like, you mm. begin to ask yourself those questions and then that's truly what begins to let you step outside of that normal and begin to find something else. Mm. I feel like, okay, this can't be normal. There has to be something, there has to be something to it. And, you know, mm. and yeah wow it, it's it's sad but we had even married people that and you know the thing is we always believe that it is um what they call it it is just women women are the ones that go through this thing but the day we did that series we had a couple of men come out and say they had to walk away from marriages because um their wives were abuse physically abusive verbally abusive at them and i'm like wow <laughs> so before That's now true. men normally would not come out yes before now men normally would not come out i'd never like i only had couple i think i'd had three to four men actually share the stories with me and say you know what i'm actually going through hell here and i, I wow. need to get out of this kind of toxic relationship but now i believe men are coming out and i and i hope that even their agencies that can help men because we just celebrated father's day and happy father's day to all the amazing men out there that are really really responsible and doing the needful for in their lives Mm -hmm. happy father's day to them and you know when we're talking about it people are like no don't say women that are doing the father role like i had a friend that actually said oh that he saw something i put on snapchat and i i said i'm um, happy father's day to women that are, are taking the father role and i've been doing amazing jobs and he said no we should just celebrate the fathers i said no because there were time even on mother's day i had friends that celebrated their fathers because they were the mothers to them so it's yeah. not about just the being called a man but when God created man, it was both male and female. So it mm -hmm. is the man context we're talking about. Yes. And if you're a father and you've done amazing things for your for your children as a mother, when it's mothers, they, they celebrate you because you've done those great job that great work. Mm -hmm. But you see, a lot of men had under this thing of oh my friends say what my family say, or people say they'll call me a weakling, so I have to keep quiet. I can't come out and say, Oh, this is what I'm going through in my marriage. Mm -hmm. But we have a lot of men that go through those things and i was so happy when the topic came to my head and i sent it to you and you were like you love this topic perfect I'm like, okay, you know what let's yeah. do this and it was being stuck now i want to start from this about. how was growing up how, how was growing up about. like for you oh man <laughs> um i will say that i grew up in a typical um I grew up in a typical Nigerian household. Um, you know, my parents were, my parents are very traditional, very, very traditional people. Um, okay. My father did what he was supposed to do or what he was meant to do. So, i.e., pay the school fees, go to work, you know, provide for the children, provide for the family. And my mother was the yeah. homemaker. So my mother wasn't necessarily, my mother's never been a stay-at-home mom. No, my mother's never been a okay. stay-at-home mom. She's always had a work job. She's always worked. She's always made money, you know. Um, at the same time, she's always taking care of her kids. So I remember okay. um, the time where I didn't really necessarily grow up with my dad um, because my okay. dad was, um, my dad usually would work out of, we lived in Lagos and my dad would usually work outside of Lagos. So he would go to Korak, Port Harcourt, he would go to Abuja, he would go to Calaba, he would go to Enugu. So I remember always having to travel to all those places to visit my dad, like during summer vacation when we had the long wow. time. So I'll spend like maybe six weeks out of the whole year with my dad and then spend the rest with my mom. Um, so it was wow. like, it was tradition, like it was very, it was just, it was traditional in that sense. Um, okay. um, 
my mother's probably I, I'm hesitating a little bit because my mother doesn't like me to talk about stuff like this but for me I'm just like you know this is my life story it is what it is but um now that I look back I see a lot of the things that you know my mother went through a lot of stress she went through a lot of stress just raising mm-hmm. us she has five she had five girls me four I have five sisters four sisters so five girls and a boy the boy is the last one so I'm the first child so obviously um wow there was a lot of pressure my mother felt a lot of pressure raising her girls and that pressure just came from these stories that society had ingrained in her brain like oh you have all girls how are they going to survive oh all girls girls are not worthy girls belong in the kitchen girls this girls that so my mother had all of these stories in her head so everything that she did was because she was scared that she didn't want her girls to turn out a certain way she wanted the best for us she wanted us to she wanted mm. us to, you know, to win in life. She wanted us to be mm. successful. So every little thing, mm. like if you just messed up in school, and me, I'm not the smartest child. The, my sister right after me, she's freaking smart. Like that girl can store a whole textbook in her brain. But me, I'm just like, wow. what's the point of school? I beg, please don't disturb me. I'm that kind of a person. So like, <laughs> you go to school and you come back. Your mother, like, Mm. And you know, I, I never used to pass. Like math was one subject that I I did not like at all for no reason till tomorrow. I don't like. It. I'm like, what's the point of math? But mm. I will come back home with results. My mother will beat me. She will tell me all sorts of punishments. Like as I'm talking, she'll be like, "What happened? Why didn't you make it in this one?" As I'm talking, she'll just slap me. Pow! Like the people that are carry first your class, they don't have two hair. What's your problem? <laughs> oh my! I think that that that's a, a general language they use. <laughs> Today. <laughs> <laughs> wow. the class, they have two heads. Um, hmm. but back then I'll think about my mother is this, my mother is that. Like you got to ever got to the point of my like, ah, yeah, you want to even give it to me. Like, what's your problem? I mean, you're gonna be busy me like this, like what's going on? But my, oh my mother God. was also hmm. dealing with her own fears, and she still deals with her own fears that I can hmm. see. My mother was dealing a lot with hmm. her own fears, and you know, she was hmm. she was she just wanted her girls to be successful, she wanted us to win. She just wanted, and she always told us, she's like, you guys, don't stay in the house and wait for a man to feed you. Go and hustle. Mm. Go and make your own money. And mm. she always tell us. Mm. That's the one thing that mm. my mother always tell us. And I saw my mother hustle. I saw my mother, like, mm. like I see her hustle. Like, even till tomorrow, mm. as she's here, she's in, she's here, she's in Nigeria. She's, she, she, has, she has her business in Nigeria that she's running every day. Okay. To the point where we're like, Mommy, please calm down. You have a patrol. Sure. <laughs> you know that. But it's you know, not that deep. Yeah, it's not that deep. But you know, I had that mm. ideology. You know, that was like the traditional ideology mm. that I had. So for me, it was you know mm. that was it was the um, go to school, come back from school. You know, go to school, graduate, get a job, get married, have babies. Like that was just how mm. that was like how traditional my growing up was. So my whole life, I just wanted to go to school. I just wanted to get a job, make some money. I just wanted to get married, mm-hmm. have children, pay the bills, and just leave. Mm-hmm. Like, just, mm-hmm. you know, carry on with that stuff, right? Um, mm-hmm. But I, for, for me, for a very young age, from a very young age, I just knew that there was something else that I wanted to do. I knew that I didn't want to leave that life. I knew that. I just had this quest. I was very inquisitive. People had always told me that I was a very inquisitive child. I was that child who would question me. And I'd be like, what is this? Like, what is that? What is this? I would always ask questions. And that didn't leave mm. me because even till now, I'll still always ask questions. I'm like, I, st- I had, like, I, I, I always ask those questions. But of course, as you're growing up, something that I'm, that I'm learning, even as I have my own child now, is as a child, when a child is born, a child is like the closest mm. thing to, to God. It's like their spirit, mm. their soul is pure. Nothing, mm. nothing. So I don't know if you've noticed or if you've been around children, like sometimes they'll just do something fearlessly. And you look at them and you'll be like, wow. Like, depending on how you choose to see, they'll be like, oh, I'm a liar. Or that, that child does not, does not fear anybody. Or you look at it and you'll be mm. like, how is that child able to do that? But it's because they're just, they're just, they don't have any care in the world. There's no condition. There's you know, no you know, it's not even just fear. Sorry, sorry for cutting yeah. the short. It's not even just fear. I was, I was having a conversation with someone. Mm-hmm. And he said that before his wife, before they knew that his wife was pregnant, the baby thought the mom's belly is like, um, baby, my sister, my sister, and they were like, ah, I beg, I beg, I beg, <laughs> carry. And they didn't scan. It was a girl, and they didn't know that even the wife was pregnant. So children are spirit beings. Yeah, like they they, there's something like, extra about children. Sp- like honestly, and I'm seeing that even with my child. Just my child is nine, and of course he's starting to have his condition. He's starting to have this 
you know, starting to be, uh, to be, to be, to be conditioned by certain things. And I try my yeah. best as much as possible to let him know that he's not like, he's not limited. He's limitless. Like as long as that's what yeah. he wants, I will support that. And yeah. I want him to be able to give mm. himself that grace to be able to, uh, mm. you know, to be able to open up himself and to be able to, to open up himself and explore, but children are mm. limitless. And, you know, for me, being that inquisitive person, it was like, she asked so many questions. Like everybody, when I was young, everybody be like, why is she asking so many questions? And then when I grew older, I still had so many questions. But because mm. I was told that those questions were not valid, but because I was told that my voice didn't matter, my opinions didn't matter, I kept all those mm. questions in. Because come today, I still have those questions. And it's because of those mm. questions that I have that is making mm. me really come out and step outside the box and find something and find my truth and experience my, have my own experiences. Not because, oh, somebody mm. has said, oh, this is how it should happen. Then I'm like, okay, well, mm. that's how it would happen. But I'm, I just mm. go, I say that because I'm just saying because children are very, like, that inquisitiveness, that curiosity, that ability for me to be able to step outside and really explore hasn't left me. It's mm. something that I've always mm. had. But my condition is just numbed that part of me down. So now this is me giving myself mm. a chance to be like, okay, let's explore it. What's going on? You know, like, why is it, why does this have to be like this? Why is X like that? Why is Y like that? Why can't mm. Y come mm. from X? Why is X after mm. that? You know, I'm just asking myself all those questions. Mm. Mm. That's, that's, that's something. And it's very important. I like what you said. It's very important for parents even nowadays to, even though, yes, the world is filled with a lot of things. Like, even when you go to YouTube and you see a lot of things, and you see that kids now have access to YouTube now, and you're, you're almost scared, it is very important that even though they're very inquisitive, they want to ask questions, you, like, just like the, the Bible says, and, and like the scripture says that, you should gu guide your children, guide them, because at the end of the day, it still comes back to meet you. The, and you're right, we say, is the child that you don't train, that we sell the land, I mean, they sell the property that... Um, that you built when you were younger i i don't I, i'm not saying you're about but that's like the interpretation <laughs> that the child you don't train with the one that will sell the property you use all your life to build and that's the truth so it's very important that parents we actually train our children yeah that's great so do, would you say that um part of the things that happened to you before we still sharing your story would you say that part of it was because you didn't really have that very close-knit relationship with your dad or would you say that it was just because life happened? Um, I would say part of it, like, it, like I would say part of it was because I didn't have that close knit relationship with my dad. I would say part of it, and again, it's I've just come to realize is you know, um, people, men, women, whatever the case is, we want some form of attention, we want some form of validation, we want some form of mm. you know what you're doing an amazing job, and if you don't get that in your close-knit mm. circle in your family within your family if you don't get that if you just keep thinking oh i always have to continue to try and try and try and try if you just keep hearing oh if you just keep hearing oh um you could do better you can do better you can do better all the time then that's mm. just what it's going to be so for me it was i didn't necessarily have that close-knit relationship with my dad i didn't know i didn't understand how like you know men and i didn't understand the whole man situation and like men as men like as the gender I didn't understand mm. how they were. Like, even I, when I found out that I had, I was having a son, I literally cried. I'm like, what the hell? What am I going to do? Like, what the, like God, why are you mm. giving me a guy? Like, I don't know what to do with guys. Mm. I only, I've only been around mm. my whole life. Like, what am I supposed to do? Mm. I literally cried because in my head, I just thought like I could not have a boy because I'd always hung around women my whole life. I went to an all girls secondary school. Mm. My household full of five girls with my cousins, my auntie, everybody, girl, 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 everywhere. My mother, girl, everybody, girl. So I'm just like, mm. why is this man giving, why is God giving me a, guy, a boy? Like, what am I going to do with a boy? I don't know how to handle men. Like, what is this? Mm. So I literally cried. I'm like, oh my God, God is going to, you know? Um, but I would say, yeah, a lot of it, it came from me not having that closing relationship with my dad, you know? Me not being... Um, um, you know, just me. And again, the only thing that I was just told was just the fact that I, I just had to do well in school. So like for me, that was mm. my focus. But there are other things that came up along the line. You know, with mm. um, I, I remember with with um, guys opposite sex, and you know, coming. You're like, how am I supposed to? Like, what am I supposed to do? You know, and then they tell you you're mm. beautiful. You're like, oh yeah, I'm beautiful. But because you you never hear, <laughs> and that's what the school wants. You know, we want that validation. Mm. You know, we want that. We want mm. attention. 
you know, we want that you know, mm. safe space to be created for us to be like, you know what, I'm doing something, I'm contributing to something. Mm. But when you don't hear that, mm. you hear that from people on the outside, you're just like, you just melt because that's the only thing you hear. That's the only thing that your soul is coming mm. for. And that's what you hear. Mm. That you don't even have the ability to really be like, are you really telling me that I'm beautiful because I am actually beautiful because you want to? Okay, so, so someone from Instagram is saying, did you go to QCOG? I did, I did. I did. Oh, so, so you have a cute fellow QCOG <laughs> here yeah, on so Instagram. <laughs> I think that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, I think I finished all four. Yeah, I did. I did. I did. I actually, I actually wanted to go to Queens College. Oh my god, I wanted to, but what's good? You ended up going to parents coming. What's good? I went to OBMS, so I went to day school, mixed school, everything. Going like it was no. I really wanted to go to Kiss. Well, good plan. Kiss was live. Kiss was live. I'm so glad I went to Kiss. Kiss was live. Yeah, it was live. I love that. That's that's amazing. (laughs) Yeah. So let's fast forward. You're done secondary school. Everything has been going well. You were not. You were not. You was. You were not a dull student. You were not like an average student. You were just that student that let me just pass and get out of school. That was that kind of thing. You understand? (laughs) We all know ourselves. We just want to read the book, pass and get out of school. But this this happened. So you got you. What what year did you come to Canada? So I came to Canada in two thousand and five for university. I came to Canada. Yeah, that's when I came to Canada. Yeah. Okay, so after that, what happened? So I came to Canada in 2005, and of course, like, that was like me leaving the nest. Like, oh my gosh, there's nobody here, blah, 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 <laughs> you know, no mommy, no daddy, nobody. I was like, ah, oh, man, freedom, finally, and stuff like that. Um, and then, you know, I was here, and um, I was going to school. Um, then I started to, I really started to live by myself, um, mm. you know. And then, um, I mean, life was good. I was like the baby. People used to call me the baby because I was really young. I came when I was 16, I think. And out of like everybody that I hung around, I think I was the youngest. So everybody used to call me baby and stuff like that. I had like older people mm-hmm. who used to look out for me like, oh, Biola, Biola, blah, 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 and stuff like that. Um, and then also that was a time where like I was starting to get more into guys and stuff like that. I started dating this guy, broke up with him, started seeing somebody else. Um, but the one key thing though is... I think it was at that point, too, that I got into my first situationship. So I always talk about situationship. So situationship basically is a relationship that there's no commitment where you mm. just, like, you know, one person is more invested in the relationship than the other person. And me, I was always the person mm. that was more invested in those type of relationships. So I got into mm. my first situationship. And you have to, like, remember what I said was, all I was just trying to do was to just, you know, now I'm in school. So my headspace is like, I'm in school. Now after school, I'm going to get a job. But, you know, let me find a man that's able to settle down with so that when I finish school, I'll get married and have children, right? So that was my thing. So I remember this friend of mine, we had been friends for a while, maybe for like a year and a half prior to that. And then all of a sudden, okay. I remember one time, one evening, we had gone out to the club and then we came back. And then next thing you know, this guy is giving me some type of advance. And I'm like, are you okay? I'm like, I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg. And then before you know it, he actually started getting into all those things. I'm like, oh, okay. And then like that, it turned into a situation, ship situation. And, um, mm. you know, I started doing ridiculous things. Like, oh, man, I'm not even proud of all of these things. But I'll talk about it. I started cooking. I started, I'm like, I started doing all these things. Like playing the wifey role, basically. And mm. this is because I have just been told that you know, you have to be able to, like, you know, for you to be able to, for you to be able to want somebody, or for you to be able to get into, for somebody to be able to want you, you have to work hard. Have mm. to do this. These are things that I have seen mm. my mother do. You know, my mother had, because my mm. mother had done all of this, even with her own her husband, but she had done all mm. these things. So for me, that was what I was supposed to do. So I was doing those things because I just wanted him to just be like, oh yeah, let's start dating. Oh yeah, let's get married. Whatever the case is. Um, then that was not even like, after some time, I just got tired. I'm like, ah, it will be like, Kilele, like, what's this? Um, uh, we're doing, 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 no results, nothing. I'm like, after some time, I got tired. Then the real thing started when I met my son's father. We, I met him. Mm. Um, it was initially for him to do something for me, um, but to build a website because he's a graphic designer, whatever, whatever, whatever. He's an IT person. So he, um, the initial thing was to build something for me. And then all of a sudden, we start talking and then like that, like that. I'm like, oh, I love you, blah, blah, blah. All these butterflies, whatever, whatever, whatever. Mm. And before you know, we started dating. And there was, he was in England at the time. So coincidentally, that mm. summer when I met him, I was already due to go to England to go um, to visit. Okay. I had planned to go to England either way. So I was like, ah, perfect timing. Like, 
I'm going to come visit you and, like, you know, we're going to um, chill and hang out and get to know each other and meet each other in person. So I go to meet him. Of course, we clicked everything. We start dating. Two months into it, we just start fighting a lot. And I'm just like, oh, man, like, this is not even worth this anymore. And then we just kind of, like, broke up. Then before, after I broke up, maybe, like, a week after I broke up, I found out that I was pregnant. So I had gone to visit him in England initially in August. That was when I first met him. I went to mm. England. Then I went again to England probably in October of that same year. So it was when I went to England in October that I conceived. And then I came back to Canada. I spent a week in England. I came back to Canada only to find out in November when I didn't get my period that I was pregnant with my son. Mm. So scariest time of my life, yo. Like what 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 first came to your mind? Like <laughs> I know that you know, you know, I was watching something on, I think it was The View or something, one of those talk shows, and they said this thing, uh, Vivica Fox said this thing, she said, you know, when you do those wrong things, she couldn't say like on, on, on TV, or yeah. I think it was Wendy's show, and she was like, you know, when you do those things that you're not supposed to do, and quickly go buy the stick in the drugstore, just to be very sure that nothing happened, that, you know, for you, you doing that and finding out, oh, my god i am pregnant what what was the first thing that came to your mind i was in shock i started crying you know my first thing was my parents are going to kill me i've disgraced my family members <laughs> i'm like this was not mm. planned i was mm. only trying to get married and have children why is this happening to me mm. why is my own before mm. why is my own happening the opposite way why is it not happening the way everybody's own happens you know um mm. Hmm. So yeah, so I was I was in shock. I remember that day I went to the school clinic to go and test um to get um, to take a test, do a test, and yeah, they told me it was positive. I called him, I said this is what's going on. He goes, Well, you're going to keep the baby, blah blah blah. I'm like, Nope, I'm not keeping the baby. But anyways, I was I went to the hospital, I was like, you know, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get an abortion, I'm not keeping this baby, blah blah blah. Hmm. Then that year I went to Nigeria. I already bought my ticket to go to Nigeria. So I went to Nigeria with pregnant. Oh my god. <laughs> I know, but nobody knew because I was already a big, I was big, like I was fat, right? I was big, <laughs> so they just thought, ah, okay, like, yeah, <laughs> they just thought I was eating too much burger and fries. <laughs> so, you know, what was funny that oh year, God. right? That year, my grandmother made her so rest in perfect peace, she's dead now. She had called me, she had said, Girl, if you ever get pregnant, make sure you keep it. I'm like, What's this woman talking about? My mother called me again, if you ever get pregnant, make sure you keep it. I'm like, What are these women talking about? I'm like, you push it off. Mm. I'm not ready to see the mother in like, I'm not ready. Mm. <laughs> Anyhow, Sha, so I left Nigeria. I told the only person I told was my sister, the one immediately after me. We're pretty close, so I told mm. her then, you know, and that was, she's my vulture. So she called my son's dad, she's like, Okay. You people, what are you going to do about it? Do you want to give birth to the baby and mm. give the baby for adoption, or do you want her to abort the baby? Blah blah blah. And then my son's dad was mm. well, I already told her she's not aborting the baby, she's going to give it to the baby. I was like, mm, mm. whatever. Anyways, I came back to Canada. Just a lot of things happened with my flight. I missed my initial flight. I didn't get into Canada mm. until so I had scheduled my abortion for a particular day. I didn't get into Canada until after the day my abortion was scheduled for, like two or three days after. Just a lot of things mm. happened, and I'm just like my heart, like and with everything, all the revelations that my family, my auntie, my mom, and my grandma gave me when I was in Nigeria. I was grandma so giving scared. You. I was so so scared. I was just like, okay, no, okay, you know what? I'm going to mm. keep the baby. And then in that moment, I was like, okay, you know what? I'll keep the baby. So I called my auntie. In she's in Nigeria now. She used to be in England at the time. I was close to her then. I called her and I told her. I said, look, this is what's going on. So she called my mother. I told my mother. <laughs> my mother called my grandmother. I told my grandmother. Then my grandmother. <laughs> Told my father because nobody could see my oh father. Oh my god, nobody could see my father. Not to tell my father that this is what your first daughter has got to go and do at the age of 19. They sent you to school to go and read. Wow. You had to get pregnant. Wow. How you flew all the way to wow. London, you not tell anybody you flew all the way to London. Yo, I have got if you all the way to London, you not tell anybody you flew all the way to London. You had to get pregnant. So that was how the thing was. Sha, sha, sha. The shy came, the shy yelled, you know, my father cried, like, how can I be pregnant, blah, 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 blah. Oh um, thankfully, my father's, my son's father, his family, they were receptive. They, they were not, I guess that kind of made my parents, you know, like, they, they, they were now looking for stuff to, to just, you know, justify and do, like, at least the family members are accepting the baby. They're not saying it's not their own, at least this, at least that. So then immediately they said, mm. okay. Um, you guys are going to get married, or you're going to marry my child, or blah, blah, blah. Me, if I said, okay, not necessarily knowing what I was getting myself into. For me, at that point in time, I was just thinking, ah, I've brought a disgrace, I've brought shame upon my family members, I've brought this, you know, I'm going to now live the rest of my life, you know, paying for this mistake, paying for this disgrace. 
you know, I'm not deserving mm. of anything else. I'm not deserving of anything more because mm. this is what I've done. You know, after everything that my parents mm. have done, they send me to school. This is how I pay them back by giving birth to a child. Mm. But anyways, or by mm. being pregnant, I'd not had the baby then. But anyways, they put the introduction. I wasn't even there for my introduction. So it was done in our absence. Both of us were done in our absence. It was just our families. They met, they did everything. And then I had the baby. I had Nifemi. I had Nifemi. Probably when Nifemi was like, maybe like four months, I traveled to go see his dad because his dad was still in England at the time. They wouldn't let his dad come to Canada. I don't know why. His dad just couldn't get a visa to come to Canada to visit. It's like I wrote and did all these things that pulled my weight for nothing. So I took me family hmm. for four months to go see his dad in England. And then, England. yeah, we almost went to the registry. Almost, almost went to the registry to seal it, to make it official. But then I just wasn't feeling good. I was just like, this is too much rush. Like, you know, it just, it felt like I didn't have that control. And a huge part of me, I was still very unhappy. I just felt like I was just moving with the wind. Like I didn't have any control. Like I was just, it was just being like, I just found myself in so many, like doing things that I didn't want to do. And I'm like, what is this? But I didn't have the boldness to speak up. I didn't have the boldness to say this was how I was feeling. For me, my mm. head space, everything was, I had to, you know, I had to pay back. Do what to, everybody wanted. Yeah. I had to do what everybody wanted. I had to pay back because I had done this mm. crazy thing, this thing that I wasn't supposed to do. So I just had to like live mm. my life paying back. So, of course, I continue my relationship with Nifa means that probably, like, um, it was a long-distance relationship. We didn't see each other as often. So, I think probably, like, in 2000 and, um, I think it was 2010. Nifa means turned one in 2010. It was 2010. No, 2000 and, yeah, we were seeing back and forth. Then in 2011, yes, mm. I moved to England to do my master's. Then Nifa means moved to Nigeria because my friends helped me take care of him. So I moved to England to do my master's. And um, Nifemi's dad was moving to Nigeria at the time. But before wow. this, I was already starting to feel icky about our relationship. There was just a lot of, I just felt like at that point, I just felt like there was a lot of control. There was a lot of do this, don't do that. And if anybody that knows me personally, I'm like the most chill person ever. I don't force people to do whatever it is that they don't want to do. So I don't feel like anybody mm -hmm. should force me to do whatever it is that I do. You do the so same like, thing to you. Me? Yeah, I'm like, why are you forcing me? Like, you mm. can't force me. Like, you know? So I just, I was just mm. this kind of control. I was just kind of forced. I was just, I just was not feeling great at all, you know, but some mm. things, I just kept on telling myself, you have to pay for the mistake you made. You have to pay for the mistake you made. That was what my mother told me. That was what everybody was telling me. You have to pay for the mistake you made. Like I kept, I found myself mm. consciously apologizing to, you know, to my parents for that. You know, I kept, I found myself seeing sorry. You know, I found myself, just found, found, found myself doing a lot of things just to, just to make them feel like, you know what, you guys are important. I'm sorry. You know, just putting myself in that. But And then it was just so much unfulfillment. And just, I was just tired. But if each time I spoke or each time I tried to speak, my mother would be like, eh, Kilo, what are you saying? Like, like, like mm -mm, it's not going to happen. This is what you're going to, you're going to mm. die here. You're going to remain here. And she was also nursing mm. her own fears. She did not want her daughter to be having children all around the place. She just wanted her daughter to have children mm. in her place. She wanted her daughter to get married to mm. father, her child. All those type of things, right? So it was that. But I went to England in 2011. I had prayed so much that year. Hmm. I know. I had prayed so much that year. During Ramadan, I, I'm Muslim, right? During Ramadan, I prayed. I said, God, please vindicate me. I said, God, please vindicate me. Like, it was the year. I couldn't take it anymore. But I needed, like, a legit reason to walk outside of that relationship. So, like, when anybody is saying anything, I'll be like, no. Like, I want to state my reasons as to why I did what it is that I did. I didn't want anybody to get into my head space and then make me go back into it. So, I prayed. I said, I don't know what it is that you're going to do. Like, I just want to leave this situation. So, come 2011, I moved to England that year, in September of that year. He, my father's child, happened to be in England at the same time with me. So, um, I... So, we had... I had gotten pregnant again. It was just shortly, mm. shortly before then, actually. We had had a, we had a conversation, and I told him, and I said, look, I said, you know, we're growing. You know, we have a new family, and, um, you know, I want to work with you. You know, let's work together. Um, and I was even like, you know, we don't have to be enormously rich, that, but, you know, let's be able to take care of ourselves. That even when we get pregnant Comfortable. Again, mm -hmm, if we get pregnant again, you know, we're able to take care of ourselves. We're able to, you know, work together. You know, we can take vacations. We can do all these things that, you know, family... Then I wasn't even dreaming as big as I dream now. Then for me, it was just have a family, you know, have a child. That's what I thought my life just was. Just to have a comfortable life. Yeah, just have sort. a comfortable life, right? 
that's what I thought my life would be. I mm. surrendered. I said, you know what? This is what my life is going to be. I'm not, I'm not going to be more than this. So I, we had a conversation. And then maybe like two weeks after then, I found out I was pregnant. So I called him for three weeks. Mm. Called him and I said, ah, this is what's going on now. I'm pregnant. And then my guy starts to say something. Hey, I'm not... So you can call me now because before then we had been arguing. So he had gone to Nigeria after we had that conversation. Shortly after we had that conversation, he had gone to Nigeria. He had gone back to Nigeria. He was living in Nigeria at the time. He wasn't even in England anymore. So I was the only person in England. So when he was in Nigeria, we had been talking about me not calling him as often and stuff. And I was like, that sorry that that has to be uh, Edward. I haven't bought credit. I was just like, giving excuses and everything. So when that I found out the morning that I found out that I was pregnant again for the second time. I called and I said, this is what's going on. And then he was like, oh, now you can call me. Now you don't have any excuse. I'm like, okay, I'm sorry, but this is what is going on at this moment. And he just wanted mm. to make it about the fact that I did not call him. And I'm like, are you for real? Like, this is what's going on right now. He's like, no, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, okay, cool. In that moment, I know, a light bulb just went off. And it was just like, nobody cares about you. Everybody is just asking you to do mm. stuff that's going to benefit them. Like, I looked at myself and I was like, mm. I am really, really, like, I was literally, because I was dragging myself the whole time, like, literally trying to please mm. everybody. And it was just like, I just kept on hearing, it's not enough, it's not enough the whole time. From everybody, from mm. my mother, from him, from everybody, it's not enough, keep pulling mm. away, keep pulling away. And in that moment, I was like, like, nobody, like, nobody cares about you. And I don't mean to say that in a way of, like, being being um disrespectful but it was just how you felt yeah it's not even being disrespectful but like being like negative or whatever the case is like it takes a selfless person to really understand that like to really go out there and you know say like mm. i care about that person and when you see mm. that person or when you realize that in other people you can tell mm. when you are that yourself you can tell but at that moment everybody just wanted what was going to benefit them for my mother it was just mm. more of like I just don't want my child to have babies in different places. What will people say? I don't want them to start pointing mm. fingers and saying, oh, after everything, after all the education, after sending her girls abroad, see how this one turned out. So this one is now a single mother at the age of 19. Mm. For him, I don't know what mm. he was thinking. Maybe he just felt like, ah, now that you have a child with me, you're not going to get another guy to have a child with or that's going to date you and marry you. So I'll just do whatever I say that I want to do. So I'm just like, everybody mm. just has like their own things that they are dealing with. And then me, I'm the one that's like, trying to carry everybody on top of this my small head and drag everybody hmm. and then you know like you know i was just at the back burner like that light bulb went off and i was like you know what like literally i said screw everybody i told him i said look i'm going to go and take care of myself i don't care about you i don't care about anybody i said i'm going to go and take care of myself i was going to do what it is that be needful i knew in that moment i said if i keep this baby there's a problem right there's a I'm like, like, it's just not going to end. Um, like, it's just not going to end. But in that moment, I knew I was just grateful. Okay, so can you can you fast forward? I think it was Twitch. Hello. Okay, so I think we're we're having a bit of um, technical difficulty from um Hello. from her, but um we're gonna get back to the to the to a music break before we had back our guests um right now i'm going to play an amazing song this song is one i really love um and it is called only um i said only you the vow and the vow is a song by timmy da color that i know you know and you love and this is love and consequences by timmy da color We'll go a quick break. One minute, please.
Hello, people. Yes. This heart belongs to Yes, yes, people. It is the vow. We we're playing the vow by Timmy the Cole, and then I have my guest back. So I think it was a technical glitch. Yeah. So you were talking about when you had your second um pregnancy. He started controlling like <laughs> you don't know anything. <laughs> it's me and you now. Since you're stuck in my life of, of that sort of stuff. So what what was the next course of action? Because um you know, I, and I want to ask you this. Mm -hmm. What's your take about this old baby mama syndrome? That people are... It's not, do, you, do you feel like it's now a profession? That people are glad and <laughs> so happy to want to be baby mamas. Like, you have to take your own life and say, you know what? No one can control me. Mm -hmm. um, no one can do this to me. Mm -hmm. But you see people now put themselves in situations that are even worse than this. Like for you, you could have you could have settled for the the list, get married, be that ah, Mrs. So 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 so, ah, mommy this, and you be. Ah, I'm also part of the Married Women Association of the world. Yeah. But you took your life and say, you know what, I'm gonna do what is right for myself. But now you see it as that people wanna do it like a profession. That's why I call mm -hmm. it that they go out of their way to get so drunk to be with so so of these guys and want to be the baby mama. And you see this made this situation where the baby mama called him out on Father's Day and said, oh, and told the son to be cursing his father. So what do you feel? Is it like a mindset thing? Do you think it's something that is normal? Like, I don't know. It's not normal. It's obviously a mindset thing. Like, if you feel like having a baby, I always say this. I'm like, dude, like people, women, having a baby is not going to change. Having a baby is not going to change the situation of being with you and this guy. If this guy wants to be with you, he will be with you. Whether you have mm -hmm. 10 children or you have six children. Or you have Bridget. no children. Whether you can bear children, yeah. whether they've removed your womb, whether whatever mm. the case, whatever your condition is, if he wants to be with you, he'll be with you. I feel like people just put themselves in that situation. They just want to be like, oh, maybe if I have a baby for him. And I have thought that too. I'm not going to lie. Maybe if I have a baby for him, maybe he will stay. Maybe he will, you know, maybe mm. he will turn around. I'm like, nowadays, I'm like, nope. Hell to the freaking no. It's not a criteria. It's nothing. And people that do that deliberately, mm. it's just selfishness. Because like, you like, the way that I even look at it now, like, it's so important. It is so important for you as a human being for you to be spiritually mm. in tune with you yourself before you go and bring somebody else into the world. Because not only are you not... Of like, you are making somebody, else, somebody else's mm. life just be messed up because of your own selfishness. Because mm. you, that you're working on yourself... Mm. Like, I can, I can, I can, mm. like me, I'm working on myself every mm. day, changing my mindset. And I can see how with my child, mm. I can see how things are changing. Like I can allow him to do some things because I am allowing myself to do that because mm. I am more in tune. And I see the difference from when mm -hmm. before now, I see the difference from mm. when I wasn't that person, from when I was just going through these crazy cycles and spinning my wheels and doing all of these things, feeling stuck. You know, giving up my body, mm. using my body to, you know, to um to determine my self worth. I can see that now mm. to the point where if he has something the other time, one time last year, sometime last year, he got bullied at school, and it really hurt me because I'm mm. like, my son is one of the like most like I don't say that because he's my child, but I say that because it's the truth. He's one of the most peaceful, calming, loving, amazing human being that you ever meet in your life. He's he's just who mm. he is. Sometimes I look at him and I'm like, sometimes I'm like. Why are you so calm? Like, why are you so calm? He'd be like, Mommy, why are you rushing? I'm like, ah, you don't have sense of time, no sense of urgency. I'm, sometimes I say, I'm like, what? I'm like, look at the time. You have to be at school at this time. He'd be like, Mommy, why are you rushing? Like, what's the problem? But that's just who my son is. Oh my God. Is. No, that's just who Nifemi is. So mm. calm, like, no care in the world. He's just like, mm. and sometimes I take from that. Mm. I, 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 try, I don't want to be fussy about it. I learn from that. I'm like, He's so mm. calm, like everything is going to work out. Like he believes and knows that uh, everything will work out. He does not know how, but he just knows everything will work out. I'm like, I can take from that. But I can see how mm. 
we're having a conversation i can come to i can i can i can i can i can open up to him he can hope, open up to me in that way but of course if you're going through your own mm. cycle you're going through your own issues you're going through your own fears and then you see somebody then you have to be responsible for somebody else you're not going to give that person the chance for you to be able to for that person to be able to open up to you in that way or for you guys to come to a conclusion where you're sure. like you know what you're going to be fine so that whole baby mama thing honestly it's mm. selfishness it's just selfishness because mm. i don't know why you as a messed up person you're bringing somebody else into the world mm. and that's why some people and you find some other people too who feel like they can't you they can't have children or they don't want to have children and that they can they can mm. but they don't want to have children because they feel like they them they are messed up and they don't mm. want to mess somebody else's life up somebody else's life up which on excellence mm. is valid but if it's a fear that mm. you're nursing constantly thinking that you're messed up even if you're not messed up in the real sense then it's definitely something you want to address instead of holding mm. your fear instead of holding yourself back from enjoying or experiencing something amazing because at the end of the day you both learn from each other and you're human beings you're always changing but yeah. my point is just yeah. that whole baby mama thing honestly me i don't support it i'm like if you're having a child have a child because sometimes it just happens understood you're, but if the motivation yeah. for you to have a child yeah. is because you want to be yoked with a man or you want the man to look at you differently or you want the man to love you or to be with you then you're yeah, just getting ready to mm. just be even more crazier than you were crazy before. you're deceiving you you're deceiving like, yourself you're deceiving. <laughs> like you're just getting ready to be more like to be crazier than you were mm. than you were before you're just getting ready to just continue to put yourself mm. in some kind of wahala because honestly you don't need it there's no like i can't explain it enough like there's no joy in it like it's not even like beans mm. it's not even beans but sometimes you feel like you have to give up your life. That's another thing mm-hmm. too. I felt like you have to give up your life for a long time. I felt like I had to give mm-hmm. up my life, and I'm actually going to talk about this. Is mm-hmm. I felt like I had to give up my life to be able to teach my child, to be able to train my child, and this is the first time I'm saying it. It made me like, it made me just wish so many things. Like ah, man, it made me wish so many things that I didn't want to. Like I didn't want. I'm like, you know, like being with his father. Like mm-hmm. the whole thing was, oh, you, you're, you're with his father. You're, you have a child with his father. You have to be in a relationship with him. Even if I knew that I didn't want to be in that relationship, I knew that relationship wasn't fulfilling me. And mm. I started to reserve my child because I'm like, if not mm. for you, I would not be in this relationship. When you get to that point where mm. you begin mm. to have those type of thoughts that if not because of one person, you will not mm. be in a relationship with his father. What's going to happen? I manage the relationship with his father. We build so we're mm. older. And then now the child wants to live his life. I'm not letting him mm. live his life. Why? Because mm. I stayed in a relationship because mm. of him so now he's indebted to me so those are some of the things mm. that i started to realize and i'm like this boy has no like he didn't even choose to come to the world i could have he didn't he even did ask for it to come, like he did not even ask for me to have you understand i could have still gone ahead and did whatever it is mm-hmm. that i wanted to do he did not even ask to come to the world mm. i chose to bring him to the world so why mm. am i holding myself back mm. from enjoying myself or from living my life and then putting that on him living putting life. that boy that on him and holding like when i realized all mm. of these things in my head i'm like yo 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 okay we need to switch things up here at that point i said regardless of whatever it is mm. my child will be fine god gave him to me if you're saying okay my child is mm. going to be fine he does I'm not have a father figure in his life but he will be fine god is his father god is his heavenly father he mm. will find somebody an uncle if he will find somebody my child is mm-hmm. going to be fine and that's what i like if there's anything mm. that i have learned is every mm. day or as much as i try as much as i remember i tell i said mm. this child you've given it to me i don't have any man that has to raise a child i don't have any experience mm. this is my first one well god this child is your mm. own he mm. just came to i'm just a channel he's your own mm. whatever it is that you want to use just mm. use him mm. and just give me the strength the ability to support mm. him to be able to guide him to be his earthly guide to be able to I train him and support him to train him in the mm. way of the lord and when it's time for me to let go mm. for me to just remove everything and just be like okay now i've given you all the values i've given you everything you need in this world to survive now please go and just go and do your thing please go let me just relax let me just trust and know mm. that he's going to be fine because from the day that he was born till this very day mm. so many like he's a boy he's a boy like so many things you think like so many things but i'm just like i cannot continue to worry continue to give myself mm. headache continue to go and say i want to marry somebody because i want it yes i want to marry yes i want a father figure but it's not because of that i'm going to choose just anybody i want to bring just anybody in my vicinity no like Mm. God, please just take mm. you. Just take control. However you want it to play out, let it just play out. And I know it's for my own good. It's for His own good. Let it just just continue to mm. show me the way. I'll continue to follow. But as far as 
carrying him and mm. you know being fearful and doing everything in fear and having this mentality that no if i do this it's going to happen i'm like i'm not interested in any of that i'm not mm-mm. let it just happen in the way that it wants to happen and it'll be fine so, so let, let's go back thank you for addressing that and I, and I really love that you still put in your story today but let's you go back to where you had the second when you, you knew you were pregnant oh, again when I, and he was already demanding <laughs> oh you were not this when you were not yeah. that so what what was your next move so when i found out that i was pregnant again you know when i said I, that light bulb went off i was like ha. you know um hmm. that light bulb went off and i was like i'm not even you know i'm not i'm not caring about myself i don't care about myself i'm not um I'm not, um, I'm not giving myself a chance to leave and blah, blah, blah. Then I found out that I had the STD as well. Mm. You know, my first instinct at that point in time was really to just, um, my first instinct at that point in time was really to, was really to take care of myself. My first instinct at that point in time was really to take care of myself and to just, because I realized how much I had put myself in the back burner. I realized how much I had, um, I had neglected myself. I realized how much I had just given up, how much of myself I had given up just to make other people happy. I realized mm. I didn't have any, like I, did, I was empty. Mm. I was really empty. I didn't have anything to give anything mm. out of me. Again, I was really empty. So, you know, I went to the hospital. You know, they told me, they're like, oh, mm. um, who's your partner? Let's call him so he can also test and stuff like that. So I picked up my phone and I called him. I'm like, he's not in the country. He's in Nigeria. So I picked up my phone and I told him, and I said, look, I said, I'm not fighting with you, but this is what's going on. And then he's like, oh, no, that's not my business. It's you, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, look, I'm not fighting with you. At that point, I, knew I wasn't ready to fight. At that point, I wasn't mm. ready to... Um... At that point, I wasn't ready to fight. Sorry, message just came in. At that point, I wasn't ready to fight. At that point, I wasn't ready to... I had just let go. I just wanted to be peaceful. I just wanted my own peace. I just wanted my own mm. joy at that point. So, of course, we were still you know, fighting, throwing hands, mm. oh, blah, blah, blah. Me, I'm like, regardless of whatever I say, I already made up my mind. This was the your your volume is decreased i don't know if your phone is ringing or something no it's not a... how about now okay yeah. okay yeah. So at that point, I was just like... yeah if the noise is still there yeah oh there's some very weird noise oh wow this technical is really how about now okay can you hear yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, as I was saying, I said at that point I was just ready to, uh, I was just ready to, I was just ready to just move on. And the amazing thing is how everything just happened was just amazing because at that point I moved to England. I changed my circle of friends. I changed like, of course, I might because I mm. left my friends back in Canada. So I moved to England. A lot of things changed. And I tried to, that was when I got introduced to, like, I really understood the whole concept of love. I started reading books. I started, um, mm. you know, people started introducing me to a lot of things. I was just like, wow. It was like a whole new world. And this was because I made the decision to leave mm. that whole, that thing that I knew wasn't serving me in any way, shape or form. So it was a whole new world. I, I took care of myself. I took care of my body. I, I, you know, I, I, did I, I didn't pray as much. I didn't pray as much, but I just mm. became more free spirited. I became more free spirited. I opened mm. myself up. I was like, wow, like there's a whole new world. I started to think about like people, I started to get introduced to people who were talk, talking to me about being positive, like the whole idea of being positive and stuff like that. I was mm. like, wow like there's something mm. out here you know i'm like there's something out here that's different from what i mm. have always known and to me that just even increased my quest but um still still even after going through all of that i still had there was still some things there were still some stories in my head with regards to me still wanting to just have this marriage on lockdown me wanting mm. to have these children mm. because I was 30. I was still a little strict on myself, even though I had stepped outside of that relationship. I still had some of those ideologies, okay. like those stories that I was telling myself that like that marriage has to happen, that um, the children have to come before mm. I turn 30, the job, the this. <laughs> it was like that structured life. Mm. So like there were still those stories that were still just staying in my subconscious. Then 
I went through I went like I went through another phase where I started to get angry at life. I came back to Canada. I finished my master's and came back to Canada. Then I just started to get angry. Mm-hmm. Then I always I remember always having to tell myself, "Oh, when I when I get this, I'll do this. When I when I get married, I'll be more mm-hmm. I'll be more attentive <laughs> or be more loving towards my son. Mm-hmm. When I do this, I'll be this. Mm-hmm. When I do that, I'll be that." Like it was just those things where I I I I put myself in like a strict timeline, still on still without necessarily mm-hmm. Um, without necessarily being intentional. I didn't have that power of intention. Mm. You know, I stopped dating mm. for a while, though. I stopped dating for, like, two years. I didn't date anybody. I didn't see anybody. It was just me, myself, and I. But, you know, it's one thing to stop doing something, mm. and it's another thing for your ideology and your mentality to change. Because to I stopped change. doing mm. something did not mean that, like, my ideology about that situation changed. Because what happened was, when I started dating mm. again, those fears, those stories that I had about dating, about men, came back up again. And guess what? I found myself back in the same situation that I was in. So it was one thing for me to stop dating. Sorry, Abia. Let me cut you for mm-hmm. one minute. Let me cut you for one minute and, and you continue. And that's one thing I always tell, like most of the people that we do the night show together. And I say this thing, I say, when you leave the dating site circle, or maybe you you stop doing, um, probably you just got, you're out for a breakup, or you had a very very long term relationship, and you and you guys it didn't work out for both of you. Mm-hmm. Take more than enough time to heal. Now, don't just say, "Oh, I'm going off. I'm not going to do anything." In that process of you staying a long time off, everybody. Take that particular time to heal because it's the healing that makes the next relationship different. Mm -hmm. If you still take the same mentality of this is how guys are, this is how this Mm -hmm. is, you will still be the same old person in a new relationship. So it is very important, like you said. Even though you took two years off the dating circle, you needed to, after you had to know that you just took the two years off, you had actually not healed through the Mm -hmm. process of what happened to you before Mm -hmm. then. Mm Mm-hmm. That's so true. That's so true. And again, I found myself, I started dating, I started seeing some guy. Um, we didn't probably maybe kicked it for like, what, like six months? Um, then I, 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 I remember I started reading relationship books and stuff like that. I'm like, how to catch a man, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, I said what I think about it now. And I'm just like, <laughs> like, <laughs> I just my face done. I was like, yeah, you know, I did that, you know. But it's the truth. I started reading relationships with how to catch a man, blah blah blah. Um, the, uh, no, um, hmm. but why why men like bitches or something like that? I bought that book. I remember buying that book. Why men like <laughs> something like that? Something like that. Something along the lines. <laughs> I don't recommend that book <laughs> in any way, shape, or form. But no, I started reading relationship books and stuff like that. Which I mean, some of them were really beneficial, but I just didn't understand. So again, you have to hmm. understand that, like. The reason why I still found, found myself in that situation was because I, I, I lacked that confidence in myself. I still didn't think I was good mm-hmm. enough. I still didn't think like anybody would want me. So I was still nursing these fears mm-hmm. about, you know, I have a son, you know, I had like, who's going to want me with my son? Who's going to want, like, you know, I looked at mm-hmm. myself as like baggage. I looked at myself as like old cargo. I looked at myself as like, I wasn't good enough, you know? So I still had those mentalities mm-hmm. about myself. I still had that story that I was nursing about myself, which was letting me, which was what really was it getting me into this. I was attracting these relationships where they didn't want to move on they didn't want to commit they didn't want to um that was the energy that I was putting out there and of course i believe a lot in mm. energy when you put out that kind of energy you attract that type of energy back so there was no commitment yes. there was no sort yes. of commitment there was no sort of okay let's do this there was no sort of um let's build let's move to the like you know let's build let's how can we move on how can we build ourselves and stuff like that so one of them the first sure. one happened i took a year two years off right First one happened six months. That one was even it was even chilled. It was like on and off, on and off. After some time, I was just like, well, I cannot continue this again. I left it. Then I didn't even leave it. Mm-hmm. Something else came into the picture. Somebody else came into the picture, mm. you know. And uh, <laughs> I knew that was the most roller coaster. If there's any English like that, relationship of my life mm. it wasn't even a relationship. Mm. It was a situation ship again. But it was so mm. like it was so much. Like it drained my life. That was the point I decided to change. I'm like, this is like, this. Can- I cannot continue like this. I knew there was one mm. day that, um, there was one day, this guy, like, we, like we fought on a regular. It was like, we fought. It was, and it was, it was a, it was a circle. It was a, it was a circle. It was, it was always myself, himself, and his ex. 
You know, there was one time he even told me to my face, oh, my ex is more important than you. The reason why she's more important is because she's my ex. I made her my girlfriend. You are not my girlfriend. Blah, 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 blah. And you would, you, like, you, you would think like something would go off in my head and I'll be like, okay. But I was still there, just still waiting, still wasting my life. So, and I was living by myself at the time with my son. So I remember one day I was, we, were, we had fought. We had fought. And then this was when I started to like a lot. I started to slowly, I had not gotten there yet, but I slowly was realizing, I'm like, this cycle that I'm living in is not working for me. This idea, this lack of um, worth that I have in myself, lack of confidence I have in myself is not working for me. So I was just sitting down there. So we had argued or something, something silly. I can't remember. I can't read like how silly, as silly as it was. It's that silly that I can't remember what it was. Very, it's very insignificant right now. But we had argued and he was that kind of a person that when we argue, me, I'm that kind of a person that I, I always jump to take the blame because I don't want the other person to feel like, because I, I, like, I'm always at their mercy. So I don't want them to leave me. So I'm always willing to take the blame. I'll be like, okay, I'll take the blame. Let's just move on. I just want us to be together. Let's just move on. That was kind of a person that I was then. So we had argued again. And I was just like, and then he had just, the way he had painted the story made me look like I was at fault. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, am I really at fault? You know, I'm questioning. I'm like, am I really at fault? Hmm. But at the time, I'm slowly realizing like, hmm. man, things are not working. Things are not working. You have to change. I'm slowly realizing, but I had not gotten there. So this evening I'm at home. Mm. I guess we had spoken, we had not spoken for a while. Then he calls, we spoke a little, blah, blah, blah. And then something, and then we f- dropped the phone. Then I think something happened again right after. And then he started blaming me again. At that point, I was just mm. tired. I'm like, why, um, why do I have to get blamed for stuff that happens? Why? Why does he have to be? Everything. Why? Do you know mm. why? Why? So I sat, I sat on in front of my computer. I sat crying. And it's me and my son both of us i start crying i'm crying i'm just like mm. I'm just tired then i go into my room mm. then i lie down on the bed i think it was on the bed i was on the bed or on the floor and then i start crying i knew i was crying like mm. i was crying i wasn't even crying because this guy had done what he did again i was crying because i had put myself through so much that I didn't need to, I did not need to go through. I had settled for so many things that I did not need to settle for. I had accepted so many things that I did not need to accept. And I still found myself in that place where mm. I was unhappy. And at this point, I had lost everything. And I didn't have, mm. I had a job, but it was a minimum wage job. And it was a part-time job. I was earning peanuts. I could barely pay my rent. Before, when things like that happened, I would, you know, I had a better job back in the day. I had a better job. I would go out shop for shopping spree four hundred dollars. Like you know, I had to me, I had everything. I'm like, you know, money wasn't a problem at the before then. So I would use money and all those things to cover things up to make it look like you know I'm living the life. But at this time, there was nothing to be covered up. Mm. It's like you're naked, like not literally naked, mm. but you're naked. Like the only thing that's left is now you, your soul. There's nobody to like, mm. like to take over. There's I'll nobody cover to cover you up, you up anymore. I was just crying. I was just crying. And the only person at home was my son. So my son comes into my room. He was in his room and then he just heard me crying. He's like, what is wrong with my mother? He comes into the room. He just stands. He's looking at me. And then he's just like, he was so helpless. And he just looked at me and it was just like, why? Like, he was just there. And he's like, he was just helpless. And he carried me and put me on the bed. And he put my head on the pillow. But I just like, I was just holding my stomach and I was just crying. I was just crying. I was just crying. I just was, I said, it's done. It's over. I can't do this anymore. In that moment, I was just mm. like, I didn't want my son to, to think it's okay for me to continue crying or for mm. him to grow up and look at other women. I feel like it's okay to treat them like that. And I just looked mm. at him and I said, this six-year-old man is taking care of me when it's supposed to be the other way around. Like, this is how messed up that mm. I am, that this innocent soul has to do the job of mm. taking care of me, 26 year old person. Mm. I know in that moment, I was just like, I'm done. I said, I'm done. I'm mm. not interested. I'm done. I'm done. I had to mm. move back in with my parents, to be able to find my feet, to be able to clear up my debts, to be able to clear up a lot of things. But I just went back to God and I told God, I said, mm. God, I said, I have done, I have tried to control everything. I have tried to do everything. Mm. I have tried to manipulate the situation. I have tried to control the situation, mm. but I'm done. 
I just want to surrender to you. Mm. Whatever mm. it is that you want to use me for, just use me for. But mm. I just, I just want peace. I just want to be happy, regardless of whatever mm. anybody thinks, regardless of whatever. Mm. If they feel like I'm old, I'm, I'm, I'm out. I'm going to clock thirty soon, and I don't have anybody that wants to marry me. Regardless of if I'm, I have this child by myself, and I don't have any man in my life. If people refer to me as a single mother, regardless of whether I'm working this minimum wage job and I'm not making as much money, regardless of the fact that I can shop, I can't shop as much as I used to shop. I just want peace. I just want joy. I just want happiness. Like I just want to feel peace for my soul. I just want to. I just want to be with you. Like, I just want to hold on to you every day. I just, man. I like. I thought I said, God, I will never ever leave you in my life. In, like in my life, because at this point you have to realize that you are just stuck in a place where your mentality, your mindset, everything, you're, you're doing the same thing over and over again, the same way, but it's not working. And it's like, it's not working. Like something else has to happen. Something else has to happen. Something different has to happen. And it wasn't just in that moment that I just told myself that things have to change. And I'm not even, I, I can't even say like this. Is what, I know like one thing that I did was I prayed. So like that's now like that's mm. uh, like now when I like when I do a lot of my live videos, I talk about God a lot. Even when I talk to people, I'm like, do you believe in God? Some people say universe, whatever the case. I'm like, okay. I said for me, I believe in God. I talk about God a lot because I'm like, I don't know where I'll be because there's no human being, there's no nothing mm. that has saved me from the kind of misery mm. I was putting myself in. And I just remember that day, like, mm. and with this process through through during this time, I probably didn't share as much, but I cried so much. I cried so much from all the pain, and I knew when god was walking in me i knew when god i left unconsciously i left all the people that i used to be friends with now i'm starting to reconnect with those people again but back then all the people that i used to bring be friends with back then unconsciously i just left them unconsciously i walked away because mm -hmm. i was seeking something different and this time i was seeking my soul purpose mm -hmm. i was seeking something that was fulfilling i was seeking mm -hmm. something that just made my heart mm. full i wasn't seeking human i was seeking god mm. i was seeking myself mm. so i just left all of those things and mm. i just started to move towards other things i started to move towards god i started to move towards clarity i started to have more clarity over my life i started to have more like a better hold on things i started to understand mm. my purpose for existence i started to understand my purpose like my soul purpose i started to hear more from god i started to mm. exercise more patience i started to be more happy i know i didn't have anything mm. i did not have anything i had moved back to my mm. parents house but if i tell you that i was the kind of happiness that i had even mm. me i can't even explain it sometimes i think back and i'm like i want to like, i want to relieve that moment i want to relieve that moment but the kind of happiness mm. that i had like the kind of happiness that came with the decision that i made i was like i was mm. peaceful i was peaceful just knowing that mm. i didn't have anything materially but i just had this i just had me like i have me. joy yeah i keep talking hard hard because i still have me but just mm. knowing that i have mm. me like me as a child of god me mm. in this moment my being alive to so have gone through all of that and to come back full circle and experience something different it was just amazing like it was amazing mm. and in that moment like you know things started to open up i started to be more clear even i changed like my relationship with my son i wasn't as forceful or as you know demanding of him to do certain things you know and my son is very intuitive with his with mm. his soul with his spirit when he doesn't feel comfortable around people you can tell and before i used to force him to be like no mm. you have to like that person but now i just let him be if he doesn't want it i'm like he doesn't want it don't force him he does not want it let him be like mm. don't force him leave him alone mm. you know if anybody wants to shut him down, i'm like no my son has a voice let him speak for himself i taught him how to speak for himself let him speak for himself because when he's older when i'm not there mm. he's going to protect himself he's going to be able to stand up for himself so please mm. don't shut my son up let him be so mm. i started to have like a different mm. relationship a different ideology like a lot of things even when you mention about when you talk about you know that whole baby mama phenomenon me wanting to be pregnant i remember me wanting to be pregnant for one of the guys that i was in a situation with that when i think about it i'm like how i'm like how <laughs> I'm like yeah i'm like mm. i thank god i'm like how i'm like no 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 mm. but i say that to just say that like i had to give myself that i had to give myself that i had to i just had to i knew that it wasn't working i knew that i had been spitting my wheels for the longest time i knew that i was just being crazy doing all of these things trying to manipulate trying to control trying to just 
living in fear, living in constant, mm. in constant worry mm. day in, day out, knowing that this is not mm. what I should be doing, but I was still engaging in it. So now where I was just like, even sometimes when I, sometimes I still find myself wanting to control sometimes when I, now I'm more aware of it, but that I literally would just be like, I surrender, like whatever it is, I'm like, God, I surrender everything to mm. you. Just let it play out in the way that you want to play out. Let your will be done in my life. So now that, you know, I have that constant relationship and it's like, it's there as opposed to before. Where is that? I'll go to God, I'll beg. I'll be like, please give me this and then I'll run away. Please give me this and I'll run away. Please give me this and I'll run away. Instead of just staying hmm. in the moment and just hearing from my soul and just letting my soul just take off and do its thing. Hmm. Um, before you go, I just, before you continue, it's, I, I, I try, <laughs> I, I, I'm a, I'm a soccer when people cry. So I try to hold myself a lot. And um, I just want to use one, just one minute to pray for people that are in even far worse situations mm-hmm. where they feel like that's all their life is all about. And they feel like that's all they can ever achieve in life. And they feel like that's all, um, they can't be anything without that one person in their life. Mm. So God, we pray this this afternoon that you you help people like that no more of mm. you. As Abiola had more than enough time to understand that prayer works. Amen. You know, people don't know. People feel like oh, you just talk. You just you're just talking to one person that probably would not answer you. But we know prayer yeah. works. Oh Lord, we pray that whoever is in a relationship or a situation ship or in a domestic violence situation where they feel like their lives are stuck. Lord, we pray that you bring them closer to yourself and let them understand that your love wins every time. Your love is the greatest thing we can ever want or desire in life. God, we pray that you bring them close to yourself. Lord, we pray that they will understand that there is a purpose why you created them and there's a purpose why they have come on earth and there's a purpose why you made them be in that situation. You know, when, when Joseph... For people that are familiar with the story of Joseph, when his brothers sold him to um, the the to those traveling to Egypt, you know the funny thing was when they came back and they saw Joseph, he, he was already a governor. Mm. One thing he said that what you plan for evil, God turned it around for my Amen. good. And I want to speak to that lady or that man in that kind of situation where you feel like your life is stuck, yeah. your life is messed up, or you can't achieve anything, or you've been, you've been failing all these years. Mm. Nothing good can come out of your Nazareth. Nothing good can come out of your mm. life. Let me tell you, God is not just a God of second chance. Mm. He's a God of many yes. chances that gives yes. you chance every time. Let's say his, his word and his love mm. is new every morning. morning. So there is no mm. pit that you are in right now mm. that God can pull you out of. Amen. There is no situation. I don't know if you are in debt. Probably you're almost going to file for bankruptcy. Mm. You're like, you know what? It is over. Mm. Even if you've not had a job for years, let me tell you, God is just a God of... He doesn't even have to snap his fingers mm. and turn your, your life around. Mm. But the one thing you have to do is to come closer to him. Yeah. I don't care who, what people have said about you. Whose reports will you believe? Mm. It is God's report. The person, see, you know one thing I read in Purpose Driven Life? Hmm. And he said one thing. He said, you cannot know the idea of the manufacturer without speaking to the manufacturer himself. Amen. And God is the one that made us and formed us. Yes. And I don't care what people have said about you. They didn't form you. Mm-hmm. They didn't make you. I don't care your mistakes. Mm. They did not. See, that's, that, that's so-called mistake. Mm. That so-called mistake is what God is going to use to spin you around. Amen. Now, I, I, I don't want to know where, what part of the world you're from. Oh, mm. in our family, we're like this. Let mm. me tell you, you are caught off from that cycle. Mm. It is a cycle not meant for you. Mm. It is a cycle that's from the pit of hell. Mm. And it is not meant for you. So you have to be renewed in your mind to understand that this situation is not for me. Amen. It is not for my children. Amen. You know, some people will say, oh, my mother had cancer. Mm-mm. Let me start doing things. Maybe I'll have cancer. You Let me not. tell you. Cancer has been washed by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Cancer isn't what God has written in your life. Amen. Your life wasn't written that, oh, in the life of so so and so mm. is cancer. cancer. On the life of so so and so, there must be um 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 insomnia. Yeah. Some people don't even sleep. Mm. And they always say, oh, no, it's my family. You know, in our family, we don't sleep. Or in our family, we don't marry until the age of 35. Mm. Let me tell you, Jesus has done that. He has fixed that. 
whatever cycle it is, you just sit down. You know, there are times when, I, I'm sorry, I have to go into this spiritual room for one minute, but there are times when you think you are in a situation until you sit down and realize that it has been a cycle from years before. Yes. And that is why as a parent, as, as, a, as an adult, you start praying for your kids right now that whatever mistakes I have made in the mm. past, that my, that my generations have made in the yes. past, you will be cut off from that line because you are born with a price. Mm. You are bought with a price. Yes. God, God, you don't make a mistake. Oh. Let me tell you. You know the funny thing that happens? I know in those dark situations, you'd be like, probably I should have just done, not even had this child. Probably I would have just said, mm. You know what? I would have just walked the way I live my life, done my master's, done my PhD, done this. But the moment you realize that there is a bigger purpose, it had to be you that had to give her to me. Yeah. Do you understand? Mm. It had to be you. God had to give you that strength to take care of yeah. him to who he is right yeah. now. Yeah. But if if you feel if people feel like, oh, see her, see what does she even have? What uh, no man can that's a lie. God's love doesn't care about your mistakes. Mm -mm. See, that's the wonderful thing. That's why it's the past. Mm. Your present, your future are gifts God gives us. Mm. And we don't deserve it. Mm -mm. Yes. You're not longer lying to any family line or whatever. Mm. Your parents had this disease. Or they, I, I know the following, they'll say, uh, is there a family disease? I always tell them, no. I ain't not if there was, it's not in my own life. <laughs> Do you understand? Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's amazing. If, for, for people going through this kind of, of of mindset, I want to go, I don't know, I don't know, it, it should still be on my page. Mm. We did um, Breaking Family Cycles. You can watch that video with Pastor Piki Olawale. Mm -hmm. It was a powerful one and a half hour moment that I will not, till tomorrow morning, I cannot trade that moment for the world where you were school to understand that cycles are meant to be broken. Mm for those that are negative cycles mm. they're not meant to, you're not meant to be caught up in the cycle mm -mm. you're meant to overcome mm. you are an overcomer yeah. see you you serve a limitless god you're not a limited person he's a limitless god there's nothing that can outweigh his love mm. nothing is his love is is mind-blowing mm. so for anybody going to that kind of problem that kind of situation that kind of thing or you think that everything is gone for you let me tell you god is a god of many chances abiola doesn't look like what she has been mm -hmm. she's bigger mm -hmm. she's better mm -hmm. she's wiser she's stronger yes. and today we can see her story and be happy yes. that she made those decisions and today she's a better woman yes. for it she can and and you know the thing that god told me a couple of years ago he said, I make you go through situations so that when people go through it, you, you understand. understand what they've been yes. through and you can That's share true. the story yes. with them. Yes. If someone else were telling you, you'd be like, mm, what's wrong with this one? <laughs> is it not you? I know the one that made your mistake. But now you understand. You, you, under, you understand. You are the one that is understanding <laughs> that. Hey, hey. <laughs> no, no, there are some times where you go through the valley of shadow of death just to understand that God is actually yeah. there with you. Yeah. You know, Okay, don't let me go into preaching <laughs> mode. You, <laughs> don't Man, go... <laughs> it's, no, it's, it's don't let me go to preaching mode this afternoon. <laughs> No, but but it's it's like I couldn't agree with you more, man. Mm. I could not agree with you because when I think about mm. it, even like with the whole, I'll mm. tell you something. Like even with the whole having nephemia and stuff like that, sometimes I'm like, oh God, why me? Why me? You know. But I just realized like when you talk about cycles, mm. my family is used to a certain way of doing things. Mm. I know I am the person that mm. I'm breaking those things because now my family, like now, mm. if you know, my mother would be the first person to be like, ah. Olomo, is that your biggest worry? Why? Because her daughter is in the same situation, right? <laughs> if it did not happen, she'd be like, ah, you can, oh, they mm. say after one, Rukini. But now, mm. she's like, no. When I left my son's dad, we have a good relationship now. It took mm. a while for us to mend our relationship, you know, for us to get to where we are now. But, you know, I had to I had to do a lot of forgiving. I had to do a lot of letting go. I had to do a lot of, you know, healing that mm. but we have a good relationship you know um i still saw him in january with my son with nifemi and um yeah and mm. we still have conversations about mm. nifemi and stuff like that and, you know friendly conversations and stuff like that but you know when i think like you know even mm. you know with domestic violence you know I, he didn't beat me or anything but you know when he gets domestic mm. violence when i'm even having conversations with my mom you know she's like ah, 
if he starts to beat you, koya law, ko, you know, she's telling people like, you know, leave. I think in everybody on this life is Yoruba. Sorry. <laughs> I have to caution myself to not be speaking Yoruba very often. But, you know, she's, she has that conversation, you know, to the point where she's like, you know, if he's beating you or whatever the case is, you know, it's time to leave. You don't have to stay there and suffer. But the thing is, she wouldn't have given herself a chance to be yeah. able to say that if I had not given myself a chance, to, mm. you know, to be able to do that. So when I think about it, sometimes I'm like, ah, why? Me? But when I look mm. at my son, I'm like, man, this guy, I don't know how, I don't even, but I'm just so glad that you came into the world. You came into my life at the time that you came into my life because, Hmm. I know that there was a purpose for you. It's for you to for you to be able to help me retrace back my steps, bring back, like you know, bring myself back hmm. to what it is that I said that I want to to helping me find hmm. my purpose, to helping me find myself. That's why I say hmm. like children, they are spiritual. They don't know this, but they are the closest thing. Their souls is the closest thing to to pureness. To God. absolute pureness, mm. absolute purity, because there's no mm. conditioning, there's no, mm. um, there's no nothing that's already in their head where they're like they're already thinking I'm not good enough or whatever mm. the case is. Absolute purity. A mm. child and an old person are the only two people mm. that will tell you. Not only two people, but a child will tell you what he wants and what he doesn't want, and you cannot force him to. You cannot. If he mm. does not want it, he does not want it. There's nothing you can. Do. You can't. You can't look at it and be like, it. oh, he's disrespectful. Yeah. But he does not want it. He does not want it. And you just have to deal with it. Sorry, but mm. you know, when I look at him, when I look mm. at Nifemi, I look at my life. I'm like, wow. You know, there's just a lot of. It's mm. a lot of. It's a lot of correlation. It's a lot of. You know, how I choose to see it. It's a lot of correlation. It's a lot of. You know, connecting the dots where it's like this boy came to. He came to he came for a mission. I know he's I don't even like I don't even know what his own purpose is. But I'm like already they're already mm. shining yourself. Like you're already you are that leader that's already setting the pace and making everybody grounded in a certain type of way. So I can't even imagine what that mm. is going to look mm. like when you're older. I can't imagine what that's going to look mm. like when you grow older, when you continue to grow, you continue to move, you continue to mm. explore. But um I hear everything mm. that you say and it's it's honestly the truth. It's honestly the truth. Mm. That's mm. yeah, it's it's the truth. So and mm. I know I know that um mm. I know that one of the things that um one of the revelations that I got, I remember when I was going through my cycle, one of the revelations that I got was, you know, God said, I'm going to take you out of this misery. Definitely, you're not going to live in that misery. Mm. And I want mm. you to also save other people. Mm. And I want you to also save other people mm. and and, and hmm. another time I got another revelation where it was like this, like whatever it is that you're doing, you have to take it back to you. You have to you be able to do it. You have to take it back to your people. You have to target it towards your people, specifically the Nigerian people. Hmm. Why? Because I know that hmm. as Nigerians, we have that mentality. A lot of people are suffering. Hmm. When I shared my story, the amount of people that messaged me, and I guess because I put my name, because I read stories like that on Bella hmm. Ninja, but it's always anonymous. But when I shared my story, the amount of people that messaged me back, I was like, some people were like, oh, I'm going through the same thing. Oh my God, hmm. they can't come out and my speak. Sister, people are going through stuff. They can't hmm. come they out can't, and though. speak. My sister, they can't they come can't. out and voice their opinions. It's like, they can't, they can't shake. They can't breathe. If hmm. they breathe, Somebody will tell them, is that not how you mm -hmm. want to go and do X, Y, Z? Why won't your life end up the way it's ending up? I'm just like, mm -hmm. people are going through mm -hmm. stuff. Like, people are going through these things every day. Like, irrespective yes. of wherever it is that you live, people are going through this mm -hmm. every day. So that's like, when it when mm -hmm. happened, I was just like, okay, I want to find a way to be able to reach people. I want to find a way to be able to increase my visibility. Because at first, I was thinking, mm, I'm not going to lie. I was like, mm, I don't want to work with Nigerians, Jerry. Nigerians are these Nigerians are that. But again, that's the thing I say is your stories, the kind of things that you tell yourself. If you're telling yourself that, then of course, you as a Nigerian, that's, what she, that's the kind of energy that you're putting out there. And of course, people are not going to work with you. So mm -hmm. now, I'm just like anybody, like anybody, as long as you are ready to move, you're ready to change. As long as you feel like, man, this thing is just costing me my life. I'm tired. I'm tired and I just need that help. Mm. It's possible for you to change mm. because if I can change, you can change. Like if I can change, mm. you can change. Mm. It's possible. Mm. Mm. Thank you very much, Viola. Like I, 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 I've, I've seen you share the stories with me, but I, I thank God that God, God turned your story around and made it something that people can learn from, people can understand. And I wanted you to talk about steady steps and what's, what's the goal, what's the purpose about on about um steady steps and um 
and are there any future projects? Don't worry. I'm hoping that one time I'll come to your, your side and we should organize something and I walk around something. Yes. But um, what's, what's Steady Steps all about? Mm. So Steady Steps is a, um, it's a, it's, it's a, uh, what would I call it? It's just Steady Steps is the name of the company. It's the name of my company registered with the government here. But um, basically what I do is I really help people make, I really help people move past the situations help them move past whatever it is that's keeping them stuck in that situation so it could be toxic mm. relationship it could be that they're suffering from something mm. from the past that's really that they're that's that they're difficult that's that they're finding difficult to let go of that they're not able to um they're mm. not able to um they're not able to make sense of, and it just keeps them stuck in that situation. It keeps them stuck mm -hmm. in that, um, in a relationship. That's those stories that they keep telling themselves. What I do is I help them move past those stories for them to be able to live a life. Cause some of those stories will be costing you a lot of things. Some mm -hmm. of those stories will be costing you, um, staying in a job that, you know, you are way more than staying in, you know, staying in a job that's way, what that you are mm -hmm. way more than. But you just stay at that job because you're scared of moving or mm. because somebody has told you something. Somebody has told you the devil, you know, is, is better than sure. the angel you don't know. You know, you're staying in a toxic relationship mm -hmm. because of, oh, I'm staying because of my children. I'm staying because of whatever the case is. I'm staying because mm. I have to stay because I'm a wife. And I made a mm. commitment to God that I have to stay in there. You know, you're staying in, you're, you have toxic friendships, not even just intimate relationships, but you have toxic friendships. And you rather stay with mm. those friends because you, that's what mm. you're used to. I basically help you mm. get unstuck, like help you find ways to be like, to move from that situation, to move from those stories and move into mm. something different, mm. a new experience so you can create your own truth. And um, right now, Steady Service is coaching, mm. speaking. I do have conferences. I had a conference in Winnipeg, May 19. And the goal for that conference is to take it worldwide, to take it everywhere, to take it to other parts of the country. Mm. Hopefully to my mm. home country, Nigeria, mm. that's the goal for the conference. And that's just coming up. That's mm. just little. But right now, what I do, I do mostly mm. online stuff. I do some local things here, but not as much. I do online, online stuff because you can reach more people online. You can reach more people across the country, across the continent online, apart from... Yes. yes. Yeah, you can reach more people online. And right mm. now, I have a monthly membership group that I just opened. Um, so basically, that group is yeah. to nurture people. And I know some people will be like, oh, well... Um, I don't know if I'm ready. Some people are just, it's, 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 it's a low end program because some people are not comfortable mm. with the idea of, okay, how is she going to help me? What is it going to do for me? So that group is really for somebody who's like, you know what? I'm not ready. I don't know if I'm ready to do, I'm ready to go in. I'm jumping with two feet. However, I know that I need change. Mm. However, I know that I want to do something different. It's that program is basically mm. to just open yourself up to the process to just, it's for it's to have to, to be to be able to interact with people that are like minded like you. When you come into that program, when you come into that group, mm. you're going to be able to see that like you're not the only person, like you're not the only one. You have people, sisters supporting you who want to see mm. you win. Because the worst thing or the biggest thing is it's mm. not even so much that you don't know how to do it, or it's not even so much that you don't have the resources around you. Imagine if you know, mm. in a group of ten people or if people that you surround yourself with, you're the only person who is just that positive go-getter person. Every other person is just negative or they just keep bringing you down. After some time, you're, even mm. going, to, you're going to start looking at things their way and be like, they're even saying the truth though maybe this thing is not possible but for you to be able to have a group of, yeah you start doubting yourself mm. but you have that group of women who they're supporting mm. you they're keeping you accountable they're praying with you they're praying for you mm. they're there for you you can mm. always go back to them you mm. can always put down your ideas mm. you can always make like you know make things happen for yourself you can always create that move so basically mm. that's what that group is mm. about and that's i'm going to be nurturing that group it's mm. a monthly um it's a recurring subscription. So basically what that means, it's monthly. Every month, they're going to be paying. The investment is $97. I don't know how much that is in Naira. I don't know how much that is in other currencies, but it's $97. And um, we're just going to be praying together. Okay. We're going to be praying for you. We're going to be doing one weekly mm -hmm. live videos based off of a um, discussion or a topic that everybody consents um, that everybody consents to and um, mm -hmm. it's just it's it's a supportive mm -hmm. accountability group and for people who are ready to change for people who are ready who know that they want to do differently who mm -hmm. know that they're just tired of spinning their wheels who know that um, mm -hmm. the seat is burning and they can't take the heat anymore 
and they're just ready to move to something else. You know, they're just ready, mm. but they just don't know how or they're just trying to figure out how or they just need that support, mm. that supportive space. That um that um yeah, they need that supportive mm. space. They need that um that accountability partner and that accountability group. So we're gonna be keeping accountable mm. for the things that you say you mm -hmm. want. We're gonna be keeping accountable for the change that you want to mm -hmm. see in your life. And when you're not doing what it is that you're supposed to do, we're gonna be calling mm -hmm. you out and saying, but that's not what you wanted. So why your earth angels and um, mm -hmm. yeah, and if you want to know more, just send me a message on Facebook. Um at um you can actually send me a message at Bialama Konjuala is my full name, or on Instagram, steady steps or I don't know. Have I no connect us? I don't know. However, whatever you want. But basically that's what <laughs> I don't know. If I'm not your friend on Facebook, right? <laughs> Um, but yeah, um, but yeah, yeah, so, um, so, so it's it's it, that's even perfect, huh? That's that's even perfect. Um, so for people that are in like you're in situations where or you feel like you want to talk or you want to join a steady group that will be having like accountability checks with you, you can always send a message to Abiola Makonjola um, on Facebook. On Instagram, if you feel like you don't know how to spell the steady step, you can also still type Abiola Makonjola. Under yeah, it, you true. see that it is at steady, steady step. step. But yeah, underneath, you see Abiola Makonjola. And you see a smiley face, so you know she's the one. <laughs> that's um, true. Thank you very much, Abiola. It was no amazing. Problem. I really, really had a great time. I did. Um, thank I bless you. God for your life. And, I, and I'm happy that um, part of the goal is, you know, when I was younger, I used to tell myself I didn't like women, I didn't like ladies. All my friends were guys, but God always told me, and see, even he always said my pastor said, "Oh, the funny thing." Oh, my pastor said, "But that keep quiet. You're going to watch a lot of women." And I'm like, "Oh my!" And I and I was like laughing with her about it until yeah. I'm seeing the reality where I have to talk and work with a lot of people, and I'm like, "Oh God, this purpose is too big for me." And and he always he always gives you strength. He always gives yeah, you strength. That's one does. thing I know. It God does. God cannot bring you to a place and leave you there. He never leaves you stranded. Uh -huh. He will not take you to a place and give up. So Yes. Abiola, let me start another message. <laughs> but yeah, um, I'm super grateful. Um, Thank you. I'm so grateful for this We should welcome. have something co you. to come up really soon. Um, I don't know when, whatever time, but if it's like a, an Instagram moment or an Insta live moment where we just come, discuss, share things that yeah. are going on um yeah. it will be really lovely to have that yeah. around and yeah. um i think send really, that love if, to your yeah. and some son i will you feel me? Okay. i will i think also i was gonna say i think maybe even like you know like have people because i know you have like maybe just have people just you know sending q and a and you can just you know come on and you know answer some of those questions okay. or okay. you know um yeah give people some kind of okay. feedback or whatever you know um, people can send in their message prior okay. to, and then you can have them, um, you know, answer them live. Yeah, you can send you can send a mail to life matters with anadiri at gmail dot com. You can you can make it anonymous. You can you don't have to write your name. Yeah. Um, you can send a direct message to us at life matters anadiri even on Instagram or Facebook, mm -hmm. or or just shoot an email. We we get a couple of emails from a couple of people yeah. that tell us to pray with them, that tell us they're going through this, they're going through that, and and I, and I always say it. We always have feedback Saturdays. So send whatever feedbacks you have about the show. You just send feedback Saturdays to us at Life Matters with Anua Dejiri. And um, it's been amazing. If you want a guest, if you want us to discuss a topic, if you have something you're going through and you want us to discuss it on the show, you just send it to us. Mm -hmm. We are always open to do those things. Um, and yes, we are grateful to you. Abiola for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. I appreciate give you insight, wisdom, appreciate knowledge, it. understanding Amen. in the name of Jesus. We pray Amen. that we grow from strength to strength, we grow from glory to glory. Amen. And that this will not be the last hmm. of you. Hey, this will like, not be the last like, of you. But you will empower more like, men. Like, you empower more men Amen. to be better yes. and to make sure that their their lives and their future Amen. are better for them. You will not be tired of seeing me. You will see me. <laughs> Amen. Thank I will you not. So much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Abia. God bless Amen. you. Amen. people thank you very much it was an amazing time having abiola makonjola on the show today it was an emotional moment it was oh 
oh my oh my oh my i have never been this teary or, or or that emotional before but yes um she shared a life story with us she shared things that she had been through in her life and you know i don't know what you're going through i don't know what what people have said about you whose reports will you believe you you're not stuck don't be trapped there's a book if you want to if you want to um go get it um being trapped i think some the trapped um trap life or something by Evelyn lindsley yeah it's another book that you can also get um for those that want to go into business there are a couple of books you can also go you can you can get a couple of books online you can buy them you can you can send a message we have books in our library that we we share with people and if you want that then we we're always there already so yes for today we're wrapping up the show i'm gonna go on a music break to end the show but i will tell you today that if you want us to pray with you, if you have things on your heart that you want us to discuss, you just shoot a mail to life matters with Anu Adedere at gmail.com. You can send a direct message to us on Instagram at Life Matters with Anu Adedere. And you can send us on Facebook at Life Matters with Anu Adedere. So with this, we wrap up the show and we'll just say a word of prayer before we go because what do we do prayer works prayer works every time and i don't know what you're going through i don't know what situation you are in but we pray this afternoon that the lord will be with you the lord will strengthen you the lord will cause his face to shine upon you in the name of jesus we pray that everything you lay your hands upon you will prosper we pray that if you're stuck in any kind of situation job or you're scared to move or you're scared because you feel like nothing else matters nothing there's nothing you can do there's no there's no how you, you can achieve much in life we pray that god will open the eyes of your heart to be able to understand that god is bigger than your situation and that god will always fix you and be with you and be there for you in a time of trouble father lord we thank you we give you all the glory in jesus name we pray uh, amen so for people that are just joining us yes we've come to the end of the show yes 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 it has been an amazing show i had an amazing time i don't know if you did but i had an amazing time and god god really was here god was here god uh, god still is here and he has said that his love is all is mega blowing overflowing yes and if you've not gotten my single it is his love by anu adedere yes you should go get it it's an amazing piece an amazing one um we have more songs coming out and also you, you should remember that god is your heavenly father is your abba father he will never leave you he will never forsake you his love is always there for you if he has done it before for you he will always do it again is the same god i am telling you it is same god yesterday today and forever and um you know god 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 doesn't give up on us let me tell you god never gives up on us he never he never gives up on us i don't know the situation you're in but god has never he has always proved himself strong and mighty on my behalf on our behalf and you know god has been there for us he loves you he will always be there for you you just um stay close stay connected to him and we'll be ending the show with it's happening it's happening by tosin b it's a brand new single of tosin b minister tosin b a very good friend of the house and this is it's happening by tosin b god bless you my name is still anuade dere and you remember that i love you we love you in the house and we celebrate you always and god loves you more god bless you see you next week hello people Hello, people. Yes, we've come to the end of the show. It's happening. Glory, hallelujah. God is changing our lives. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. Mm. So, I don't know what it is, but God is saying it's going to happen. Don't give up on God because He has never and will never give up on you. God bless you. God be with you. I am super happy and I'm super grateful for you joining the show today. Yes, we're under the tent today. Yes, but yeah, we loved each part of the show and we are grateful to God. Whatever it is, you've told God, you promised God, it's happening. Don't give up on God. God has never given up on you. He loves you. 
and we love you here from Life Matters with Anwar Dejiri. You don't forget for my faithful and loving friends and people that always come up. You know, we have the night show this night, 10 30 pm. You know how we do it and how we discuss all these things. Hi, Alea, Trea. Um, every, for everyone, you know how we do it every night, uh, every Wednesday and Thursday nights. For those in Nigeria and other parts of the world, it is your 6 6:30 a.m. or 5:30 a.m. We always have some guests that come. And from two guests that come on the show and they always um give us amazing amazing advice so from me myself and i we say god bless you god be with you have a wonderful day